online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! So this was a terrifying episode. <laughs> there we go. There's our music. Yes. <laughs> and for those of you who haven't placed it, that's the Terminator theme. <laughs> who wants to go watch Judgment Day? <laughs> uh, not me. I've had enough of homicidal robots for one day. <laughs> anyway, hello, AfterBuzz fans, and welcome to another episode of the Transformers Robots in Disguise AfterBuzz TV After Show. Today we are covering episode 20, The Trouble with Fix It. <laughs> which, which is... is such a cute title for it such is. a... It is! It's like, The Trouble with Fix It! Right, and then you're right. like, it's murder! <laughs> murder well, is the trouble with bad. Fix It! <laughs> Pretty much! <laughs> so with me today in the booth, we have Alexis the Wrecker Taurus. Hey, everybody! Uh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me all over social media as Torres 890 Emma the Speedster 5. Hello! You can find me all over the internet at Emma Fife. Megan Lord and Megan Tron Salinas. <laughs> hey guys, you can tweet at me at the Menguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. And I am Katie Kia Prime Cullen. You can find me on Twitter at Kia J. That's K I A X E T. Alexis, can we kill the music? I think we are good. Thank you. Uh, Aww, you but can, it's so good. I know, I know. I love it too. I but it's that. hard to concentrate. Yeah. You can follow along on the Twitter hashtag that is A B T V R I D. Tweet us with questions, with comments, with whatever. Also, feel free to talk in the YouTube live chat. Emma is keeping track of us. Yay. It. Because we have two wonderful guests with us today. We have Mitchell Whitfield, the voice of Fix It. That's me, hello. <laughs> because we've never had him here never, before. I'm so excited to finally make it on the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I've been trying you, so hard no, to get you, know, you in. Do you know, honor. though, Mitchell, that somebody actually in an iTunes comment was like, you guys should have fixed it on the show sometime. They're <laughs> like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> you haven't seen him. <laughs> Did you mean again? <laughs> <laughs> and joining us for the actual first time, Stuart Allen, the voice of Russell. Yay! Yay. Hey, guys. Hello, world. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Thank oh, you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. It's, uh, it's an awesome pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you guys on. What did we think of this episode? Y you oh, know, we started with a Terminator theme, so... <laughs> this it episode was crazy, I will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> crazy but cool, yes. It was. No, it that's was, most episodes yeah, of this it's series. True. You know, th this was my thing about it, was I was... I feel like we got a little bit of insight into Fix It's backstory. No, we but it didn't. But still really didn't tell us anything more than in the previous episode or a couple episodes ago when Strongarm was attacked by the army of Fix It's. Yeah, yeah. no, yes. that was weird. Yeah, this didn't, this didn't really explain anything else. I, I could have done without Exit Pursued by a Bear if it would have given oh, us man. a flashback to the crash of the Alchemore. Yeah. Just, Something. It was like the only plot we got was at the very end with the little remember who you are scene. Like, oh yeah, we're six episodes away from the finale, aren't we? But you have to time admit, to get the plot back. It was cool to hear Roger Craig Smith say, "Excuse me, large hairy creature." <laughs> <laughs> yes. that, to me, that was worth it to have the bear yes. there just for that I one line. I wrote it yeah. down. Yeah. Excuse us, giant hairy creature. <laughs> Wait, may we match our combat skills against yours? It was so awesome. Like, are Maybe you laugh. asking the bear to dance? <laughs> What has happened in the future that causes bears to grow to the size of a transformer? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know if that was just like an, a perspective issue. <laughs> now that bear was like 14, 15 feet tall. Yeah, yeah. In reality, I think it would be a tall, as tall as like a good two or three story building, like a Holiday Inn. <laughs> or <something. laughs> Well, the irony is, before I came, before I came here today, right. my son and I were talking at the table. We're having some lunch, and bears came up because he goes to visit his grandma who lives in Washington State. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of bear there, and um, she's like, "Well, how big do bears get?" I was like, "Well, you know, you have the giant grizzlies and Kodiak bears, which are in a, and of course, you know, they get huge. Yeah. Polar bears are you know, very tall. Yeah. Yeah. They could yeah. be eight, nine, ten feet tall." <laughs> yeah. And they can when they're standing up, but this Absolutely. bear must have been like eight thousand feet tall. <laughs> Sideswipe was like, "Oh my god, it was a big bear." It's like a twenty-foot tall bear. This is not okay. 
It was big. Because, yeah, when the bear first comes in, it's like, it's a bear. They're giant robots. They can just scoop it up in his hand, and then it turns out <laughs> to, 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 to be fair, though, size. Ali surrenders like, hey, all guys. <laughs> well... <laughs> I okay, just want to get up here. <laughs> I just want to bring up that Ali Surrett provides as a, as an explanation for this bear. It's not that the bear is huge; it's that the Autobots are tiny. <laughs> That's a great like explanation. Exactly. That's exactly. I feel like it's that scene from Gravity Falls. Like, is that a small cougar or is that just perspective? Yeah. Perspective. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, we we have a, And how has no one noticed a twenty foot bear tooling around outside of Crown City? There's a lot of things Crown City doesn't <laughs> notice. Yeah, no. yeah, apparently they don't notice a Dinobot streaming on the highway. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of turning, turning the other way and looking the other way in, in Crown yes. City, I think. Yeah. But admittedly, that think was explained accurate. by the dinosaur rumble thing we had last week. So Dinobots aren't super out of the ordinary You're because right. they've seen stuff like that. Correct. Yeah, the Demolition Derby. Yeah, yes. Which is cool. Um, can I just say like how unsettling the very beginning of this episode was because I thought this was going to be an episode where it throws you right into the action and then it goes back yeah. and then like you spend the rest of the episode mm, getting there. Right. I but they, too. they yeah. threw yeah. us right in uh, and apparently this thing with Fix It has been going on for some time. Yeah. Now. And that was really unsettling. I was like, when did that happen? Did I miss an episode somewhere? Yeah, no, you're right, Megan. I, I, I think that's totally justified that you, because I mean, the, the episode starts with they're looking for Fix It and he's like glitching out in the woods. And you're waiting and so, for like 12 hours yeah, exactly. earlier. Yeah, yeah. 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 12 hours earlier. Yeah. Escape. 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 Just memento Escape. it up or something. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little bot. And I, I honestly thought that our DVR had rec- started recording a minute late or something like that. So it's like, oh, okay, we're, we're right in the middle of, no, this is the start of the episode. Yeah. What is going on yep. here? Yeah. Yeah, no, and it, and it was heartbreaking to just see him out literally at the crash site just on, like a broken record on repeat mm-hmm. and just completely gone. And um, overnight, he'd been there overnight, overnight apparently, because that's where he was. Right, yeah, right, right, right. So it was kind of upsetting. Yeah, it Felt was. Bad for me. And I'm wondering <laughs> yeah, if there isn't good. a reason he was out there and a reason that he was saying escape over and over and that over. That was what, what I was, was catching. Well, there. that's what I was waiting for, and then the bear turned up, so I thought maybe it was <laughs> yeah, really the bear. Or yeah, it was. <laughs> it was a really big bear. To that be was fair, a guys. super convenient bear. <laughs> He was picking up an emergency transmission about an escaped bear. <laughs> unless he had seen, is it Chop Shop, the one that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Unless he yeah. had seen his one of his parts well, yeah. coming to, you know, help him. Yeah. And he had in advance knew what was going to happen, and he was sort of trying to. That's trying to get one back, and that's when he glitched up. Know. That is true, because I mean, it, he's it, trying to help him escape. Yeah. Escape, and then he went into that glitch, you know. I don't think so much was trying that he was uh, help trying. <laughs> I don't think he was trying to help him escape. I think he was more yeah. being like someone escaped. Is it yeah. is it too early to make a theory? Um, Do no. it because uh, I know we like to save predictions for the end. But what if not on this show? <laughs> <I know. laughs> and I'm not saying gonna... anything. If you're right, that's all I'm saying. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, what? we don't need another phone no, call. No, we don't. Need what that. if the reason why the ship? crashed was because several of the prisoners had planned an escape and that's what was happening Mm. i don't know how that would happen if they're all in stasis so you basically were saying that he was like reverting to the the moment moment when he was yeah that's interesting yeah that that is interesting Uh, i still think the ship crashing was kind of a distraction to get us away from the main villain. Like, I don't know yeah. how Megatronus would orchestrate that because now that we know it's him. Mm-hmm. Boy, that was spoilers for everyone who skipped our last episode, wasn't it? Wow, wow. <laughs> but you know what? You, you just fed me this on a platter because I wanted to break away from this for one second to thank you guys. And for those of you out here who don't know this, you guys don't just talk the talk, you walk the walk. You were there for us. <laughs> you were there at Comic Con. Yes, we you were. were there for our panel, and we loved having you there, and we really appreciate it. So, yes, I'm just sure. know the kind of hosts that you have on this show that were actually there in person person for us at Comic-Con. We love to have you. Yay! So I'm sure Adam and very Jeff dedicated. were very grateful that I put them on the spot like that. Oh, they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I think my highlight was um, being in Constance's picture. That was my yes. highlight for sure. Yeah, Constance tweeted out a photo of the, the front row of right. this panel. And it's the <laughs> three of us. <laughs> we are literally <laughs> front hey and center. And no one else like, there. We just want to hold you. Just you guys. <laughs> She's just going, hi, all my buddies. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. It was great having you there. Yeah. So back to the episode. Let's just let's just talk about Chop Shop, start to finish, because yeah, he was kind. He didn't really have a lot to do 
this not episode. really okay though i will say that when i saw him again in the stasis pod and uh which arm is it righty is the one <laughs> that, was, was, that escaped it, yeah righty yeah, escaped yeah, right. yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah it was right okay it was right. <laughs> wonderful <laughs> yeah it story, takes a minute I'm to be so like glad oh, you're here <laughs> to help me i got a little scientist my in me too. yeah <laughs> The one that makes an L is the <laughs> left hand. And then if you mirror it because of your right That is so right. sad. That is so sad. Anyway, yeah. when Righty discovered the rest of Chop Shop, who, by the way, I forgot his name was Chop Shop because on this show we were to him of as spiders. Legion of Spiders. Right, because right, that's right. what he yeah. is. Yeah. Right, so until they said his name in this episode, I was like, oh yeah, his name is Chop yeah, Shop. Yeah, there, were, there were three um, things I noted about him. For one, I forgot he had an accent. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I put that in my note. It's like, oh yeah, he is egregiously Aussie. Yeah. <laughs> that is what's in my notes. Yeah. Do you really think you could take a soul and cop <laughs> <laughs> I, I also really like that he referred to the rest of him as boss. Oh, I, yeah. I was yeah. wondering yeah. about that. I'm wondering if, like, the minicon that's the head and torso isn't the one that's in charge and everyone else is just kind of lackeys number one, two, three, and four. I mean, that was For all you know, of... maybe Righty is the, is the one in charge. <laughs> but he called it, he called the rest of himself boss. Yeah. Boss. So yeah. Gonna, Clearly he has issues. Yeah. <laughs> so They're all the boss. Let's see. There's got to be a lot of stuff, stuff going on. But, but, uh, but it was in that scene specifically when he saw him and he was like, boss. I was like, oh, I totally, oh, he's so scary. <laughs> He is. He's really scary. <laughs> and I think he's the only villain I've ever seen try to use Energon cubes as brass knuckles before. Yeah. That, was cool. yeah. that was pretty cool. I will yeah, say I the that. scene where he comes apart to get around Sideswipe and Grimlock was, I thought that was incredibly well framed. It was, not it, but yeah. it also shows you that he has an incredibly unfair advantage against <laughs> any other, you know, any, any yeah, of the Autobots. Sure. I mean, yeah. uh, each one of him is a bad guy unto itself. Yeah. yeah. So you hit him hard, he breaks up into a bunch of little bad guys, comes back together and mocks you. I find him very disturbing. <laughs> very disturbing. I with an accent. He mocks you with an yeah. accent. Yeah. yeah. I, I w and everybody is confirming that it is in fact ready, so thank you, Stuart, for, <laughs> for starting that. Um, the chat but, agrees. But in yes. the chat, I have to just bring up something because I think that Katie will appreciate oh, this. Yeah. Someone whose name, is, oh, Mr. Goku Junior 2012 says, would you I say it was name. his sunglasses right hand man? Oh! oh. <laughs> Boo! I say that there. puts you Boo. in the right. <laughs> and, wow. And, but Megan is left behind. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we will have words later. It's it's We're having papers. words now. <laughs> You ha you don't have a leg to stand on. You made a using his head pun the other week. Yeah, you're done. Mm. And <laughs> I was very done. sad. And, um, and, and speaking sad. to the nature of uh, Legion of Spiders and all of his various components, uh, once again, the lovely Allie in the chat who watches every week. So you're Bless. so awesome. We love Thank you. you so much. Uh, she says maybe they combine like in Steven Universe when the when the <gasps> crystal gems combine and make a new person, oh, giant woman. Oh, in this case, it's a giant robot. Yeah. <laughs> That works too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think mean, these are all yeah. solid theories. Absolutely. Why doesn't Chop Shop dance then? I know. To get, oh. I know. Oh, Do you really want to see a bunch of spiders dancing? <laughs> that would I be think terrifying. It'd be cute. That, would be, that would be a little creepy, my opinion. <laughs> that would be, thank you. That would be terrifying. I think yeah. it'd be cute. Yeah, because in my opinion, not exactly a big fan of spiders. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just saying that alone. now. You and me. You're, you're you not the only one. No. There are quite a few people on this panel who are not fans of spiders. Yeah. No, yeah, getting to that episode being like, oh no, there's bugs. Oh no, it's spiders. Ah. Oh. So that was that, that was a fun introduction for that guy. But I don't know. I loved the little comedy of Righty just trying to blend in while everything's going oh, on that around. Was yeah, that was funny. Was it with a statue? Yeah. <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> and him being the one to fall off of the shelf and finally get fix its attention. Like, we needed Chop Shop as a pivot to that plot. Absolutely. But yeah. aside from that, he was just kind of... There. That would probably be my, apart from the giant bear, uh, that's <laughs> probably my only kind of complaint about this episode is that he was just there as a plot device to divert Fix It's attention from the rest of the group. Yeah. yeah. So that yeah. was he. <laughs> I think so because now he's been captured again. Yeah, and there's true. yeah, and, and, yeah. and um, Righty being out and about was an un, you know that was a loose end that hadn't been tied up yet. Now that's kind of tied up. It's like oh, I was kind of hoping for something a little bit more yeah. and from something we, they made such a point of mm -hmm. having still out there. Yeah. And we had yeah. Righty in the episode with Kelly. What was his name? Like Night Strike or something? The oh, bat. Oh, the bat, the bat one. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. horror Tom movie. Kenny bat. <laughs> 
that, with the sonar. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That, that was, was a super cool. That, that was, was a cool. great episode. It was. But this one, I just, I could have done without the bear. <laughs> I really could she have, was really upset have, by this darn really, bear. She, yeah. I wasn't upset by the bear. I was upset <laughs> that we had the bear in place of anything that could have been plot heavy. Right. This is yeah. an episode that was a lot of fun to watch, but gave us zero answers. But you know what? There are, and this is, I'm, listen, I'm not, I, I, we talk about all sorts of stuff when it comes to the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not an apologist. We laugh at certain things together, and I go, oh, yeah, that's right. I can see that. I can see that. But I think for me, and forgetting about, you know, Robots in Disguise, when I watch shows, sometimes it's the standalone shows that I kind of enjoy because they're not burdened by having to do other things and have the attachment. They can just be on their own unto themselves. And there was like that with Fringe. There were some episodes that were just yeah. very kitschy and on their own. <laughs> and then I was thinking as a fan of other shows saying, mm-hmm. well, it didn't move the plot forward. I didn't get the answers, which I understand what you're saying. But at the same time, unto itself, if you look at it as an entity unto itself, I still enjoyed it. It was still sort of fun and satisfying. But I know we're still in season one and there's so many questions you want to answer. Yeah. yeah. And I get it. I get that. But still, it's kind of nice every once in a while to have that Oh, good, we just get to laugh and have some fun. Right, well, yeah, what just a happy go lucky episode. Well, that was, on, that was our road trip episode with yeah. Quillfire and Hypnotoad. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> spring, spring, spring load. load. Oh, I, you I know keep the trying way to, to call this <laughs> string trap because I have too much Five Nights at Freddy's in my life. <laughs> And oh, so, Hypnotoad so is just easier to what get. What a dysfunctional ride in that tank that was, <laughs> by the way. And I kept on thinking, it was like, he just, they were, they were so, he was so worried the other guy was going to attack him. Yep. Where's <laughs> Tyrannus? And the whole thing just freaked me out. Yeah. I know the way to Tyrannus. Quillfire <laughs> wasn't doing himself Please any favors by, me. like, talking to himself. The like, clever no, Shakespearean yeah. aside. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was going to say, there, there was a lot of, uh, of, of uh, Victorian kind of asides. <laughs> yeah. breaking That's the an aside. Wall, you weren't supposed to hear that. But going back to your point you're yeah. you're absolutely right because um we've been spoiled by like the binge watching nature of netflix right yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you get satisfaction you get your you answers get it, right you then. get it immediately right. you can just yeah. go to any episode you want okay this one has the answers i'm looking for just watch that exactly okay now i know what i need to know good yeah. <laughs> well, exactly and also when you know with the sort of internet revolution and, and many many episodes being released at once right. it's that it, Yes, you actually can enjoy, I think, those sort of quote-unquote filler episodes a little bit more right. because you know you can immediately watch the next episode and yeah. that might have more plot. Yeah, I got you. No, you don't have to like, wait another week and like, oh, yeah. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the problem isn't the show. The problem is that we're not patient anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Change, well, for it's, me, the it's... Changing. Hey, we Americans, we're not patient all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just for a me, fact. For me, it's, we've been waiting so long to figure out Fix's backstory and then we get this title for this episode and you're like, yes. Finally, we'll get something. No. Yeah. Didn't I? Instead, we get a Terminator. <laughs> Which, and I'll right. take Don't it. get me I wrong. I enjoyed the heck out of this episode. Yeah. And I have to say that Drift is my new favorite and has been for oh, about three so weeks. so funny. Because he's the only one that was willing to say, just kill him. <laughs> no, <laughs> because he's that hilarious. Just like, just destroy him. Like, they're like, no. <laughs> that was pretty. <laughs> Fix it. It's a broken bot. He is too dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> well, that was pretty hard. You must just destroy no, it. because we yeah. had alert is my baseline status, which yes. is like, if that's my <laughs> secret cap, I'm always ready. I was going to say that was the Hulk line, right? That was their line. Kind of, yeah. I'm I was angry. born ready. <laughs> but it's Drift, so it's, I was born ready. Yeah. yeah. What I will say is that I thought that was extremely in character for Drift. I love it. Yeah, no. yes. I just He's my new favorite because of just lines like that. He's very yeah. zen. He's, he's not very burdened, zen. Well, he's not burdened by emotion. He's very pragmatic. Whatever yeah. needs to yeah. be done in that moment or for the greater good of the team, yeah. that's what is to be done. Yeah. And Fix yeah. it is not right. And destroy him. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it made sense for that suggestion because it was less, he's broken, destroy him, and then it was, he has the potential to murder a <laughs> lot of people in you a very close vicinity. Yeah. Yeah. So... What should we do here? Let's see. Uh, okay, we got to destroy him. Yeah. <laughs> what are our options? Deactivation? Well, that's risky. Murder. Murder's good. Yeah. Murder's easy. The world, the world <laughs> is a very permanent solution. Very black and white from uh, Drift's perspective, yes, shall we say. It would be yes. an honorable and, death. Yes. And they are he right next to a city. A whole bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> they are, and that's the point he's making, there is that they're right next to a, a city, and if yeah. we can't contain him because he's running circles around us, we need to put him down so yeah. that he doesn't do that to a bunch of defenseless humans. Right. I mean, he who, has a point. Who may or may <laughs> not be aware that there are robots. I, I still but I'm adorable. <laughs> I'm when you're not killing people, eyes, right? I, I know. You were the only one who was going to be plus joy. <laughs> <laughs> that was not what? a plus joy. 
I okay. know the joke that we always make around uh, around the set with uh, with Will and they tease me uh, that I'd never make it as a figure. I'd be the, <laughs> I'd be a cardboard cutout in the play set. I, would, oh. I actually did see a fix it plush toy while I was at Comic Con. Oh really? Someone oh my had, god! I want and one. someone was it was on the shuttle going back to the hotel at like midnight. So we're oh, all that is so dead. funny. Mm-hmm. And someone's friend had made it for them, and the person next oh, to them really? had a sound wave. I'm like, why did I not get your information? Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> that 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 if, if you are watching this, tweet me, yeah, please. We have someone here who wants a fix-it are plush toy. Same here, same here. You know what please. I want? You know what I wanted to ask you guys because, mm-hmm. uh, and I know we talk about sort of storylines and character relationships, mm-hmm. which you guys are great about bringing up. One of the things I wanted to ask you guys: What did you think about? Sort of the nice little moment between Fix It and Denny, because we've seen Aww. that we've seen their stories yeah. sort of yeah, evolve from a competitive nature yeah. to a collaborative nature, exactly. and now it's finally yeah. yeah now they're finally bonding. Denny Clay. They're bonding. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just you know, that, I trust you, Denny Clay. Yeah. It's like I'm gonna cry. And 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 for all of that, you know, this this episode didn't necessarily further a lot of the plot. There was that nice moment, I right. think, of character development yeah. between Denny and Fix It, wherein you see that. Because, I mean, basically, Fix It is glitching out. They're like, all right, we got to do something about this. We've been ignoring this for way too long. And they decide, that, you know, <laughs> the two other minicons, uh, Jetstorm and Slipstream, are like, Maybe not oh, so much. we're going to, we're, we're so gonna excited. That little guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but we've always wanted to crack open a minicon. <laughs> that is Jetstorm. Have I always wanted to crack open a, and Drift oh, being disappointed dad. Like, and I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> you dishonor me. You do not yeah. have any medical training. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then and we're subsequently doctor, getting kicked. Kicked out of surgery, right? You know, because we put a couple of fifteen-year-olds into surgery. Like, n- no, no, yeah. no. But I, I thought it was fix totally it clo- justified yeah. that that fix it would want Denny to work on it because he's like the closest thing you have to a robot doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know. Where's Ratchet? I. Yeah. Uh, that's just what I was yeah. saying. If Ratchet, was, if Ratchet was still on planet, you know, you know he would just be like, what to yeah, do. I'm a long distance you know call. Um, mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> do but, you have a functional ground bridge? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. What do you but mean, kind of? It was it was a very sweet moment, and the uh, just the fact that like a couple episodes ago we saw them passively aggressively like moving stuff from the junkyard all Talking around. Talking about doctor shows, <laughs> 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 and to the to the point where it's gotten to this level of trust, it's really great character development, and I really love how Denny reacted when he. When Fix It woke up and he's like, guys, I can't go near him again. I screwed up. Yeah, yeah. and it was really. Yeah, upsetting. he feels like he betrayed his. He betrayed his trust, and that's really. That's it was this episode was really putting a lot of pressure on Denny mm-hmm. because I mean he's he's getting trust by someone who is his friend. Right. Well, let's see. Uh, he was raised on another planet. His circuitry is nothing like I've ever seen. Uh, let's see. How could this turn out? Okay, let's see. We made a Terminator. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness the instruction manual has pictures. And it's, <laughs> and it's not like fixing up an old car. This is yeah, very much yeah. a person. Yeah. 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 Right. No, but this is one with and it's brain there. surgery. Yeah. It literally is brain surgery. Yeah. But well, you know, kudos to the writing staff also, also for a long line crafting it so that it made sense yeah. because they did work on the Decepticon Hunters They together. did, yeah. And Denny did have yeah. Experience working on Cybertronian tech, so it wasn't a completely unfamiliar right. situation. Yeah, it was so they, still a little bit familiar. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, it was it was completely justified by the time we got to exactly. this episode. I think, and the yeah. and the other thing that I that I really like that some people are um, bringing up in the chat as well is the consistency in the um, development of the re- relationship between Russell and Denny as right. well. Yeah, because you know we saw them in the beginning as these two people who were very distant. You know, Russell wasn't living with Denny; he came to live with him at the beginning of this series, and now at this point, like you're really seeing that they're a team. I mean, they were attached at the hip for this entire episode. Yeah, yeah. Right. I was there always by his side trying to encourage him, you know, you can do this, Dad. You've been at this for so long. You should be able to help him out. You know, do something good for a friend. You can yeah. do this. And a lot I of it's you. not your fault. Literally yes. no one knew about this. Yeah. Yeah. Fixit didn't even know about this. Yeah. And the irony was, I mean, he technically did fix me. He, <laughs> he no, did this. what I was designed to do. Exactly. That's stored to factory he, settings. Yeah, that's he exactly. Did. He did a factory yeah. reset and yeah. there I was to what I, and that, and I kind of like the red herring of that army of angry fixits. Yeah. I know we were <laughs> tweeting about that a couple weeks ago like this army of angry people that's it's kind of redundant that's what fix it is yeah that is, a guardian that is fix it, and yes. you know he's a century and so it's it was kind of i cool. called it yeah. two weeks ago that growing a personality would have been seen as the defect oh yeah totally and well, that yeah. and there are two different settings there's guard and then there's caregiver right and so right. fix it up until this point has been set to caregiver yeah i feel like they're simultaneous settings that they can both function given the situation, given the 
I am losing my words today. This, this <laughs> mess is it's, a place. <laughs> this mess is a place. <laughs> no. That is literally my favorite moment in, in the whole entire oh, episode. Sorry. I'm just going to tell you that now. I don't know. I, I, like he I knew was that he was him. The vapors. The vapors. The vapors. The vapors. <laughs> it, is super, <laughs> it is extremely hot in the studio right now. It's like 90 degrees outside and it's about that in here. Yeah. Pretty much. Favorite ep- favorite part of this episode was still drift with the essentially I was born ready. Like, yeah. mm, favorite. I lost my train of thought. Sideswipe. Uh, side oh my to catch gosh. Things. When Sideswipe was trying to catch <laughs> parts of Chop Shop oh, and, and then failing to catch fix it. <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> if you watch the Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged series, there's a joke about child snatching classes. <laughs> <laughs> there's always one security guard character who's catching children. Yeah. Like, those child grabbing classes came in handy. <laughs> well, and the, and the other, okay, so, I mean, as as you guys know, I do like Sideswipe. I feel like I'm in the minority That's here. why you're the speedster. <laughs> but... Can we talk about sideswipe. can we talk about um, Sideswipe's transformation? I felt <laughs> like it was like part Magical Girl transformation sequence. Oh, they've been Magical Girl and transformation was, sequences from the beginning. I know, but like and everyone s- else was just like, all right, let's roll. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. for some, but that was the thing. It was like it really stood out in this episode because he was the only one they spent a lot of time on. Yeah, Slow yeah. turn to yeah. camera, yeah, shaking drift. the hair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Drift kind of had one a little bit. A little bit, yeah. But what, that was more mini cones to me. And yeah, then it was like, vehicle mode. All right, that was let's a go. great vehicle mode. He does have a great vehicle mode. The front grill of his, of his vehicle is beautiful. It's really it's the just top of his loud. head. <laughs> you did just say yeah, that. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I did. Sure, Thank yep. You. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, you got it. What I'm looking forward to, and it's okay to talk about because a clip was released on the internet um, Windblade is yeah. going to oh, have oh, a little yeah. bit of a magical girl transformation as well. That's going to be exciting. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> It no. was on Tumblr, therefore it's legit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I Tumblr's it. always legit. Listen <laughs> <laughs> to Tumblr. Oh no, no. Uh, <laughs> Tumblr has Tumblr's its never been wrong about anything. <laughs> Speaking of social networks, kind of, let's talk about iTunes. iTunes. Yeah. Seriously, guys. Thank you so much for leaving comments. Thank you so much for listening and for watching and for chiming in. We absolutely love it. You know we do. And, you know, I think now that we're talking about iTunes, it's a good time to uh, mention our contest winner this week. Woo! Because if you remember, last week I brought in an autographed ticket from Comic-Con with everyone's signatures on it to give it away to someone who came up with the best bot. Did we say best con? Yes. Best animal theme con? Yeah. To give it to the person who came up with a good Decepticon that they would love to see in the show. Points for creativity. And leave a comment in iTunes. And we had... One entry. (laughs) But it was really good. Man, did she pull out all the stops. (laughs) She did indeed. Have we got that pulled up? I do, yeah. It was from um, Fuzzy Pink Bumblebee, who uh, we've we've seen in our our chat before, and just as an all-around excellent human. Uh, Her Twitter handle, which she very kindly left in the uh, iTunes comments, like you are supposed to. Thank you. Yes. Katie Lead, 67, uh, name sovereign voice actor Nicki Minaj, uh, species Cybertronian, a combiner, gender, female, uh, and it was an ant-like mini-con abilities as sort of self-defense mechanism. Sovereign's combined form and her components are able to bite and inject Cybertronians with a sort of venom, which Ooh. sets their neutral network, their neural network on fire, but metaphorically the venom causes a burning sensation that can't be relieved without an antidote or, or, or waiting it out. And she goes on to just, like, Oh my she God. inside wow. this out. Really, really Fire detailed. Ants. The only, literally, the only thing missing is the fan art that we were like, bonus yeah. points. Yeah, if fan we did art. say bonus points if you drew it. Yeah, but well, the Hasbro folks are like, wait, slow down. So we can <laughs> yeah, exactly. Turn the side around right now. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. That is really cool. I would love to see that there. So, yeah. Fuzzy Pink Bumblebee, thank you for entering. Yay. I will send that your way. At some point, I will DM you and get your information and then stick that in the mail. Yeah. So, congratulations. But seriously, guys, go over to iTunes and read this because. It's, it's like amazing. So amazing. It's a thesis, it is right? Amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, this, it's comments like that. Obviously, we give you shout outs on air if you leave comments on iTunes. And mm-hmm. when you do that, it lets us know that you like what we're doing. It lets our bosses know that you like what we're doing. So, you know, we can keep lights on in the studio and continue to bring in wonderful guests and talk about giant robots. Yay! Because Yay. this has been a blast. Mm-hmm. So. Um, like, comment, subscribe, iTunes, not Twitter, where we don't broadcast on Twitter. We just we link things on Twitter. But you should follow us Please on Twitter. Please do. Follow, retweet, <laughs> interact. It's wonderful. Uh-huh. YouTube, SoundCloud, wherever you can find the AfterBuzz, let them know you love us. Yeah. Yay. Because that's how we stay in studio. Mm. 
I have some uh, great questions, comments, topics of discussion that I pulled from the chat that I would like to bring up. Let's hear uh, it. Number one, so this is in relation to the nature of uh, Fix It in this episode. Uh, Mars Rover 91 says, random thought, does Fix It have a spark or was he just built, programmed, and eventually developed a personality? Ooh, I think mini cons do have sparks because they are alive. They yeah. 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 So... I think they do too, but I think that that Mars Rover ninety one, be you male or female, I am unsure. <laughs> uh, uh, well, you, all question. Cybertronians are built and programmed. Absolutely, absolutely. So this, it's not any different. No, it's but just their programming may be different. It may be lacking some things. It, it's yeah. how well they're programmed or how much they're programmed. Well, but they're all sentient to a degree. And, but but I, think, I mean, we have vehicons, right? I mean, but there, I do think that there is a point to that. That you know, we've seen that fix it seems to be mass produced mm -hmm. yes you know there's he doesn't seem to be necessarily unique especially Again, because i'm gonna point to the vehicles yeah because vehicles came in two modes and all looked the same that is true and they were meant to be low intelligence flunkies yeah That's i don't think i like where existed. this is going <laughs> <laughs> just because you're small orange with blue and sometimes red eyes doesn't mean you can't be different than the other small orange with sometimes red eyes vehicle people there you segue go. things I'm, I'm Saying that. No, what I'm saying is yeah. mass producing <laughs> a specific make, it. model, and mm. personality is not unheard of on Cybertron. And we've already talked about how Cybertronians have some pretty messed up practices regarding vehicles. Yeah. Or so we think, according to Strong Arms Rulebook. Come on, guys. We want the World Bible. Please give us the Honey, World please. Bible. We'd be so happy. <laughs> apparently, there is a really, really nice art book, but that's neither here nor there. That's oh. for, for Prime. It's apparently amazing. Um, one Christmas of our, list. Yeah, one of our one of our fans uh, messaged me on Facebook and was like, hey, there is an art book for Prime. It's amazing. You should probably get it. I'm going to throw, the, I'm gonna throw that on my Christmas just list. send it to me? Um, <laughs> anyway. It's uh, probably like then, $60. Don't do that. Yeah. Another question. And then uh, Sky Shimmertail, who's another uh, very present fan in our chat role. Uh, this question is actually for Stuart. Uh, Sky Shimmertail would like to know, were you a Transformers fan before you started working on the show? Oh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you Who wouldn't be a Transformers fan? You strike fan? me as a Transformers fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I've watched uh, Transformers ever since I was about, I guess, seven okay. or something. Yeah, so uh, I watched it pretty young. I was probably uh, exposed to the um, to the blasters a little bit too early. But, uh, <laughs> Are you talking like the arm cannons that yeah, they had like, in yeah, Transformers like the Prime? The, you know, like, uh, uh, I didn't watch the TV shows. So Okay. Until then, I watched the TV shows, I guess, when I was about 13. Okay. I guess that's when I was about uh, starting that, but I loved the movies. Mm -hmm. I loved the TV series ever since uh, I started watching it, especially Prime and, of course, Robots in the Skies, because, you know... As you do. <laughs> well, yes, you it probably know. helps that you work on Robots well, yeah, in the yeah, Skies, too. <laughs> yeah, but nonetheless, I have always been a Transformers fan ever since I was seven. It is a great uh, idea, a great concept. I love it. And, of course, uh, you got to, you know, give props to that to the writers and producers and directors. Yeah. Because, I mean, a great show, what's behind it is really the people who, who create it. Because without a great idea and a great concept and great people to pull it off, it, you don't really have a show. You know, it yeah, really takes good people in order to pull them off. And, you know, Jamie, um, Jeff... Um, Therese, everyone who, uh, who's there, they all do a great job with it. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. It's something that we talk about a lot on this show is that we feel like, you know, in Prime also, because this is largely the same team, that the writing yeah. is consistently really good. Oh, yeah. We are so lucky. Yes. yes. And it really does. I mean, it's not a cliche when we talked about this on my other 12 appearances. <laughs> uh, it really does He's all going start. for the record. I'm going for 78. Uh, God willing, that'd be great. Um, With the wait, mythical wait, wait, season wait, two, the potential season three? Wait, does that mean there are right. there 78 episodes? No, I'm Rachel? not. No, they're not. Um, After both exclusive. Wouldn't that be a nice thing, though? I would love that. But that it really great. does. I mean, you hear that in Hollywood all the time, that it does start with a great script. And there is... Nothing else without a great script. Oh, yeah. You know, we don't get to look good. The art doesn't look quite everything. It pulls everything together, and we're so lucky with that, having great writing. Yeah. So is there, I feel like there's one more thing we need to touch on for this episode, and that sure. is our, because after we've got everything fixed, after we assumedly put Chop Shop back into deep freeze, we didn't actually see that happen, but I'd be gobsmacked if it didn't. Mm -hmm. And after Fix It is fixed for a given value of fixed, we kind of did one step forward, one step back there. <laughs> yeah. We have yet another wonderful Mufasa remember who you are oh, scene yeah. with Optimus appearing in a piece of broken glass. Ooh. And it's, I, I wrote this down and it essentially boiled down to each day I learn more about the evil that approaches Earth. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that 
conversation what, was, it's like, I will need you for whatever. Well, of course it. Where'd you go? Well, I mean. That was basically, hey, we're six episodes from the end of the season. Guess what, kids? The plot's rolling back into town. Yeah. Well, and I mean, to be fair, as far as we know, Optimus is still away training with King Kai <laughs> to become the next level of Prime. To learn how to, to, learn how to do the KOK, Super right? Saiyan and Prime. The yes. <laughs> but, um, you know, with, with that, it's, it's very interesting. That means how much the Primes are leaving him in the dark. Oh, yeah. With the fact that this has been going on for some time and that they've presumably been training him all this time and still haven't told him what's going on. And you made the comment when we watched it that, yeah, we really do wish that they hadn't shown Optimus at the end of the... Uh, Pilot. Season premiere, thank you, the pilot. Because otherwise we would have had this lovely layered thing of, so is B going completely insane? Is that really Optimus on the other end of the line? But we played it rather straight because younger audience. Yeah. And we did yeah. have that really great episode of Optimus in the spirit world training. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I don't think that they... I do think that, that going into the series, you did kind of go in with the, is this for real? And then when you had that like spirit world episode, it was like, oh, okay, no. He's he's at least sort of alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I do still wish that they had played it as, is B just losing his mind? <laughs> that would have added... Maybe. That would have added something to the show, but it's it's different forms of execution. True. Yeah, very yeah. true. I, I'm, I just, I'm a sucker for the unreliable narrator. I love it. Fair enough. Again, but yeah. um, so it would have been cool, but at the same time, we know that good stuff is on the way, so it's exciting. It's just more buildup. Okay. Do we want to roll into predictions such as they are? Yeah. Anything that we think might happen? Do and you guys, we know. And now, react you're react. after Buzz <laughs> TV. And we get the laser light Predictions. <laughs> Yes, because we're not allowed to know what's coming yeah, next. Yeah, because know they're right and we can't let them know. <laughs> just, just, just stay straight. Season two? Yeah. Uh-huh. Season two? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I'm just no going to sit there stone-faced. Uh-huh. Don't know. So, Megan, we already had a prediction from you. Um, yeah, what, what were we talking about? Or? What were we talking about? I was hoping you would know, otherwise I would have brought it up. Oh, yeah, no, I was talking about the actual prison escape. Um, yes. That the reason why Fix It was saying escape, escape over and over again is because... In my mind, it would make sense if a couple prisoners were getting out and that's what caused the Alcamore to crash. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. if we're talking about what you were saying, that it was actually a distraction, then it could be that that woke up a couple of the prisoners from stasis and that that exacerbated the problem and actually caused them to crash land on Earth. Could be. Mm-hmm. So that could be it. I... I really want to see what happened. I I think it would be very interesting, but I, because I still have a lot of questions. Why the word escape? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that was not chosen randomly. I'm also he could have been repeating cheeseburger. If we were just going <laughs> to oh, cheeseburger, 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 cheeseburger. cheeseburger. Yeah. cheeseburger. I'm also I'm, I, I regret that, that. I'm curious because. In this episode, we established basically that Fixit has kind of two modes to his personality. Yes. I'm sort of curious to see if those two personalities can coexist. So he can still be Fixit the Helper, but he can also be Fixit the Terminator and not try to terminate all his friends. I feel like they can, and it's the damage that's preventing that from happening. Yeah, it's like when you're, the two the sides of your brain of, won't co- co- cooperate with one another. Kind of like in that sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. we, were, we were talking about it earlier. <laughs> Fixit is the only one with arm cannons in the show. He isn't the only one with arm cannons anymore. I miss them. <laughs> But yeah, I, I feel happy. like this is, this is Chekhov's battle mode. Mm-hmm. There's no way it's not coming back in some capacity. Even if it's not this season, if it shows up in the mythical season two, there's no way it's not happening. And we saw inklings of this last episode when he was fighting Headlock. Right, yeah, yeah. I do love picking up B and just throwing him around. Ba- I call that it's the Bam Bam moment. <laughs> it's right yes. from the Bam Bam. I was thinking of like Foghorn like, Leghorn and the awful. Chicken Hawk. <laughs> I'm a chicken hawk. I say, boy, I love that. Just, yeah. just the, oh, your- wow, you're stronger than I would have guessed. Yeah. Like, the delivery on that was pitch 
perfect <laughs> well, along with the googly eyes it was wonderful wow. yeah yeah and then awesome. i was like and I, like how they flop off like you know then fix it i'm sorry not fix it uh then mm-hmm. strong arm and then grim piles them on top <laughs> just of the each other the pile was beautiful that was very that was like a little disturbing it's a, it's a very lot of it was very mini tunes yeah like, let's see uh how would he fend against megatron i'm just curious about that <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, Megatron got taken out by bees, so... Here's the thing. Just sick fix it on him. (laughs) Put me in red-eye mode. That's just called red-eye mode. 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 That That problem would be gone forever. (laughs) I also loved the uh, Wizard of Oz reference at the end. I had a dream. And you were there. And you were there, too. You were there. You were there. That was such a good ending. That was so funny. It was. It was pretty good. Um, Ashley Quadra one on Twitter, uh, who's another. It's, oh, it's, it's great. We have like I such like a her. She's great. Devoted following. It's lovely. Um, but she's Ash- wonderful. Ashley says she likes the ending with Optimus, and there's been a lot of uh, discussion in the chat about sort of the nature of Optimus's return. Um, Pyrotech Nick seven 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 says uh, I'm all for Optimus's return, but I think that would interfere with B's team dynamic. Optimus Basi- is not going to show predict- up until the season Ex- finale. Exactly. But, well, and basically predicting that once Optimus does show up, I don't think he's going to be a permanent Oh, no, no, no. Series. He's, he's going to fulfill whatever purpose, and then it's going to be like, boop, 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 boop. I must go. My <laughs> go people need it. me. <laughs> I have to go. Now my planet needs you know, Essentially. You know, what's really cool? you know what's really cool, though? And this is something, again, that we have, we, I go back to the way the show was crafted. The way that the writers sort of crafted everything from the beginning, which was we have, I don't think I've seen a Transformers show, or even in the movies or on television, where there's been such a great merger of plot points and story, villains and fulfilling mm-hmm. that, and relationships among the bots, among the humans, and then interacting between the two. So it's such it's such a neat, and I know that, like we said earlier on, there are always so many questions. How do you satisfy getting the plot points and at the same time get the relationships? So yeah. I know they go back and forth, but I still think it's really cool that you're able to talk about relationships and the honorable part and the helm of the humans and also the action. It's kind of a really cool mix of the two and that might continue yeah. in the show. You never know. Well, and, and this actually just brings up one other thing that I wanted to bring up from the episode, which was I really enjoyed the moment with uh, Sideswipe and Grimlock, actually, where they were talking about how they were going to yeah, have to go in and fix fix it. And Sideswipe's like, I wouldn't want anybody like going into me. And <laughs> I thought that was a great conversation. I would do it. Yeah. Yeah. Really Liked that. It really, yeah. it really was. And I, yeah. then again, Sideswipe also had his head removed recently. Yeah, this so is true. <laughs> oh, that was probably a great little episode. wary of I don't surgery. Know how to touch me again. <laughs> that was also, we've had a fair few episodes that were just straight up horror movies. Yeah. 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 Disturbing. But we had yeah, a Frankenstein. Are... Let's see, we had a Frankenstein. We had a Terminator. Uh, <laughs> we had one with a little horror movie. Creature feature. Yeah, yeah. Creature, creature feature. feature. Yeah. Yeah. But we're also kind of getting the wrap up signals. So. <laughs> oh. Do you guys have any projects that you're working on that you can tell us about that aren't covered by any? NDAs? Oh boy, no! I can't. They're all kind of covered by NDAs. The safe answer. But I'm always on something. On yeah. my kids turn the channel, and they see me in the movie. They're like, "Daddy, click." So, <laughs> you like my kids see me and then go, "Hey, hey Mitchell, click." <laughs> yeah, um, me. Um, well, let's see. I, I've I've been known by some people that uh, to play the nice guy, like Russell. Although by some other people, I've I've been known to play sort of a Darth Vader, so to speak, uh, play on the other side. Like um, oh. some people know me for um, my work as Damien, the son of Batman, like yeah. the son of Batman, Batman versus oh, Robin movie. Nice. Speaking of which, there are two other movies coming out. They just got released at Comic Con this oh, year. Oh, awesome! Yeah, I'm really excited about those. Which ones? Uh, let's see: Batman, Bad Blood, and uh, Justice League versus Teen Titans. Oh, I, yeah. yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Bad. Dang. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I saw Batman versus Robin at WonderCon. It was really fun. Oh, really? Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Glad to be a fan. You were there. (laughs) (laughs) And you were there. And you were there. there. (laughs) And so were you, Denny Clay. Yeah, yeah. So the, there's that, and also uh, I just appeared recently on an, on the new Nick show coming out, uh, Game Shakers. Uh, oh. I played uh, a total obnoxious jerk in that one, so that was a uh, really on the opposite side. <laughs> so very much against character. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but still, you know, but still, uh, I like playing the uh, the nice guy sometimes too. And nice. he is a nice guy. Of course. I've worked with him for a while. I'll say he's a really good guy. <laughs> I, I have to admit it. Thank yeah. you. And where can the people go if they want to find out more? <laughs> Um, you want to go first? No, go ahead. Okay. Social networks and whatnot. Yes, I'll get uh, sued if I talk. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote mine down just in case I forgot. Oh, All right. So let's see. Uh, Twitter is uh, at StuartAllen.42, and that's uh, Stuart is in Stuart Little and uh, A-L-L-A-N for Allen. Uh, IMDb, imdb.me slash StuartAllen, and Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash StuartAct. 
Great. Nice. Right. I can get my Twitter handle, right? I can get yeah. Yes. 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 At M underscore Whitfield. <laughs> Nobody's suing me for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. Honey. <laughs> That's all That's I it. got. That's it. Okay. Yeah, we're going to play it super safe. We really <laughs> are. I'm so cool. <laughs> Alexis, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me all over social media as a Torres 890 All right. Emma. You can find me all over the internet at Emma Fife. You can also watch me on the Face Off after show here at AfterBuzz TV on Tuesdays at 9 o'clock right now, though we're switching to 8 o'clock pretty soon. Uh, <laughs> okay. And on the Cosplay Coach on the Pop Corn Talk Network that is on Wednesdays at 7 and follow me on Twitter and you'll know everything that's going on with my life just <laughs> wow <laughs> Do, I know stay tuned <laughs> stay tuned <laughs> I'm Megan you guys can follow me on Twitter at the Menguin that's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-O-I-N I'm also on a bunch of shows here at After Buzz I've started writing articles for the Movie Chick Chick with two K's and Movie Chick has started doing quick reviews on the Popcorn Talk Network so be sure to check out my reviews of Attack on Titan and The Gallows those were the two recent ones that we put out so Check and I'm out. Katie Cullen. You can find me on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram at Kiaxet. That's K-I-A-X-E-T. I am also on Snapchat as Kia Prime. If you like cat pictures in Disneyland, that's basically what I do. <laughs> I am also writing for the movie Chick, and I am on the <laughs> Red vs. Blue after show. We're having an episode tomorrow night. And the upcoming X-Ray and Vav after show. Ooh. We start on the 17th. Ooh. And... Rooster Teeth fans, if you're going to be in Austin for RTX this weekend, the Ruby After Buzz team will be there. We have a panel at Saturday, 1 p.m. in the Hilton. You should come by. You should say hello. It's going to be a blast. Yay! Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And as always, transform, transform and roll out! From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire After Buzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the After Buzz TV Network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. I'll be back. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. <laughs>